The John Morris Show, episode 68. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash johnmorrisshow. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. This segment, how to make money in web design in the coming online explosion, and... It sounds a little weird because a lot of people probably think, well, I think we've already had the online explosion. And I, I, I tend to disagree. I think, I think we're just getting started. I, I think that what we're going to see over the next five to 10 years is really going to dwarf what we're seeing now. I, I, I just really believe that we're at the beginning. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not already a lot of people online. We are all online, but how many people directly make their living from the internet? Now, I don't mean working for a company that has a website. That's not what I'm talking about. Or even a company working for a company that necessarily primarily gets most of its business off of a website. That's not even really what I'm talking about. I mean, you yourself have your own business or are making your living directly from you doing stuff on the internet. I would say that we're still at the beginnings of that kind of thing. But I think that kind of thing is going to be growing more and more in the years to come. And the reason why, especially in the United States, we're seeing a real shift. I mean, if you pay attention to the U.S. politics at all, You know, the big thing that everybody's talking about right now is the loss of manufacturing jobs. And I find it kind of funny because, you know, I wonder if back when we went through the Industrial Revolution, if everybody at that time talked about the loss of agriculture uh, agriculture jobs because that same thing happened. I think at that time, uh, you know, as that started to happen, it was something like 50% of you know, the U.S. workers were involved in agriculture, and now, today, it's something like 2% of, of U.S. workers are involved in agriculture. And, and the reason why is because the Industrial Revolution helped farming, you know, the technology advanced, helped farming become more efficient, and we needed less people to do agriculture in order to feed the people that we have here. And now we're seeing you know the 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 movement of the industrial kind of manufacturing jobs that we have here going overseas you know there's a whole argument about cheaper labor and and all those things but at the same time what you're seeing is the rise of kind of the high tech industry and you're seeing more and more people being employed by that high tech industry so for me I don't necessarily see this as some sort of maybe there's some some political policies that, you know, had something to do with this, but more than anything it feels like we're we're going through another another shift from this industrial kind of of economy to a more high-tech and services oriented co- economy and I don't know that that's inherently bad necessarily. It could be, but I don't think it's automatic that that's inherently a bad thing. And, you know, I've worked in manufacturing. I've worked in a factory before. 
And I think if you ask most people, you know, do they really want a manufacturing job? You know, it, it wouldn't be their first choice necessarily. Now, if you ask them that or no job, well, obviously, but it, it's not necessarily their first choice. And, you know, when we went from agriculture to, to industry, there were a lot of people who were employed by agriculture that had to learn new skills to get employed in uh, in industry. And a lot of our education system now is tailored towards the Industrial Revolution and making giving people the skills for that, which also says something about maybe the changes we need in our education system. But again, there's a lot of people who are employed in manufacturing that may now have to learn new skills. My family really is somewhat of an example of that. Now, I was young enough that I, I personally never got heavily, heavily into, um, you know, into manufacturing, but you know, my, you know, my dad for a lot of years was a plumber, which I know isn't necessarily, you know, exactly manufacturing, but it's, it's in that kind of same vein. I had a lot of brother, you know, a couple of brothers that are involved heavily in construction and so forth. So it's kind of in that, that, uh, a similar vein to that. And, you know, a lot of, well, none of us now are involved in construction. There's three of us that are now involved in tech. I have a brother that works at an ISP. I have a brother that works um, at a, you know, a, a popular Tango Consulting. It's a popular, a, a growing uh, technology consultant kind of business. And then, of course, me, I do freelance and a bunch of things. Um, you know, so our family has kind of shifted my dad, heck, my dad even, uh, has got into, you know, he's got, uh, got his master's degree in design and has moved into doing more art and doing, uh, has a website and so forth. So we've all kind of moved, a lot of us have kind of moved in that direction. And so, um, again, my family is somewhat of an example of this. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. You just, you got to learn new skills and that, you know, depending on your age, that can be a little daunting, but the, the whole point of all of this is that I see this happening more and more. And I see, as I mentioned in the opening, I see more and more people coming online. I see more and more people being dissatisfied with their careers or losing their careers and more and more people wanting, not wanting to go back into something that. Uh, you know, they didn't really enjoy in the first place and they have realized, you know, more and more people are going to start realizing that the job that they thought was secure is not, you know, they're, that's, that's a myth. It's not necessarily as secure as they thought. And so they're wanting to, to go into something that relies more on them because they feel that would be more secure and they're wanting more freedom and they're willing to take risks to get it. What all that means is you're going to see more and more people coming online, looking to start their own online business. And I think probably maybe even a, a bigger part of this than that is the fact that I think there's going to be less and less separation. Right now, we still have a decent amount of separate separation between design and development, between you know the whole design development and business and marketing and so forth. There's there's still a lot of specialization and separation, and I think more and more you're going to see less and less of that. And, and that's, you know, it's, it's what we're seeing if, in my opinion, if you look around, you're seeing, you know, design and development starting to meld together. You're starting to see that meld together with business. And so business and engineering to me are really kind of melding. And in a lot of ways to, you know, where we're at, business is tech. A lot of the big companies that we talk about day in and day out are tech companies. And so, it, it it's just melding more and more together. And so you're going to get business people who, or entrepreneurial types who will come online and want to do business. And it's going to be heavily, heavily oriented toward tech. And these people are going to become your competitors. Now, it's not that they're going to be competitors necessarily because they're going to get into web design and web development. Some of them will for sure. But they're going to be comp- your competitors is in the sense that we're all competing for the same attention. And I mentioned this in the opening, but it's so important to realize that in your day, when you look at your computer screen, there's you know a thousand different things that you could do that you ultimately end up choosing to do. And you only have a limited amount of time in your day and only a limited amount of time that you can spend in your computer consuming. 
And you as a business provider, as someone online providing services, you're going to have to get the attention of those people, of your potential clients. And so you will ultimately be competing with all these people that are coming online for the attention of your potential clients. And so if you never get their attention, then they never know about you and they can, you know, they can never hire you uh, if they don't know who you are. So you have to be able to, you have, the whole point of this is you have to, you have to learn how to do this. It's not enough anymore to just know how to code and it's only going to get worse. There's more and more people that are coming online. And as that happens, it's going to get a bit more and more competitive and just knowing how to code isn't enough. You have to learn how to sell yourself. You have to learn how to work in this internet environment to get attention in a good way, to get people to follow you, to get people to know you, to get people to like you, to get people to trust you enough to where they will actually hire you to do something for them. Now, I call kind of all that the people part. And you know the technical part, but a lot of these people coming online, they're going to know the people part because they did it in their past business or they just have a knack for it. So you have to learn the people part. Absolutely critical now, and it's going to get even more important as you go forward. So how do you do this? Well, there, there's a lot of things in this, and there's a lot of really technical things we could get into, but I really want the, the things that I see as the problems in the developer community, I really want to attack these. So the first thing is you have to get over this whole selling is evil mentality, <laughs> And, and a lot of developers have this. A lot of developers are are, are really kind of anti-capitalist in, in a sense in that the, anything that remotely smells like selling, they just immediately start screaming scam or spam or whatever. You have to get over this because you're going to have to sell yourself. And you're going to have to get past that mental block if you want to have any sort of success going forward. So Get over this whole mentality that selling is evil. It doesn't have to be. You get to decide whether it's evil or not. It absolutely can be, but it doesn't have to be, right? Second thing is then learn how to sell and learn how to sell in a way that isn't evil, in a way that actually engenders trust and people can resonate and, and feel good about because at its best, which is what you should be striving for, selling is really just about demonstrating the value of what you have to offer. If you really think about it, all the kind of technical parts that we look at when we look at selling like, you know, establishing authority with things like credentials and, and uh, you know, our portfolio and so forth, or testimonials, case studies, social proof, all of these things, all the, when you get into selling, all the technical parts of it, really what they are, are about demonstrating the value of what you have to offer, demonstrating that you're someone who knows what you're talking about, demonstrating that you've helped other people and they've had success. You know, all of this stuff is really just about showing people, just showing people the value of what you have to offer. And so the first thing to do, if you're kind of, you're hearing all this and it's, you're, you're picking up what I'm putting down, you haven't necessarily dove into it yet. And you're starting to realize, okay, I got to get into this. Again, the first thing to do is get over that whole selling is evil mentality and then start thinking through what what would I do if I if I just had to show somebody how the the value like how good I am or how, what I'm able to create if I just had to show them in a number of different ways to make them want to hire what would I do? How would I do that? And and then start looking around the internet and see how other people are doing that. And it'll start to, it'll start to click in your head about the ways that you can go about doing that portfolio, testimonial, you know, credentials, case studies, all these things that you start to see, start to click in your head. This is just about demonstrating the value of what I have to offer. I think a lot of people underestimate the shift that the internet is causing right now. It's kind of like Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk says that we're, experiencing the biggest culture shift in history since the printing press. And a lot of us, because we've grown up with it, don't even really realize it. But the big online explosion of people coming online and the transition to a more tech economy is really just beginning. And 
for web designers and web developers to be able to compete in that space and continue to get work and continue to get jobs, understanding how to compete, how to build your personal brand, how to get people's attention, and then ultimately be able to sell them your products, your services, or sell them on hiring you for their company is going to be absolutely critical as that explosion happens. And so that's why I constantly recommend web designers and web developers take Gary V's Udemy course, Building a Personal Brand, because you get to learn from the master himself. It's like learning how to paint from Michelangelo, and he's going to teach you everything that you need to know about building a personal brand, getting attention, telling stories, and being able to sell your products and services online in the future as the web becomes more and more important and more and more competitive. Now, I have an exclusive deal for you on that course through Udemy, so you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Gary, and you'll get 25% off of that course. Again, that's an exclusive deal, so you want to make sure and jump on that before it expires. Head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Gary.